We don't know how power is transferred front to rear. We don't know the answers to these and other questions because manufacturers consider that information proprietary and typically do not make that level of information available to the public. This roller mechanism has been designed to help us find the answers to those questions. These rollers allow us to study, in a laboratory setting, vehicle behavior and how various all-wheel drive and traction control systems operate under slippery situations such as ice. Keep in mind that how each vehicle behaves in the laboratory setting and how the vehicle behaves on various road surfaces. comparison, we will look at the 2008 Honda CRV. Although the CRV is newly restyled, Honda continues to use its real-time four-wheel drive system. Remember that the manufacturer provides no public information about how the system works, but we can tell you that it is front-wheel drive until the front wheels slip and begin to lose traction. It is only then that the real-time four-wheel drive system will transmit power to the rear wheels. Let's see if we can validate that. In our first test, the front wheels will be on ice. In other words, the rollers are freewheeling to simulate ice or any other slippery surface. The front wheels slipping should send power to the rear wheels. The rear wheels now having power, the CRV should climb. Why can't it climb? The rear wheels apparently have no power. The fronts were spinning, so the rear should have traction. Did you see the front wheels turn first before it tried to move power to the rear? Did you notice the effect of the traction control? It appears that the traction control is taking control away from the driver and going through a series of tests, slowing the front wheels down to find traction, not finding traction, then speeding up the wheel, and repeating this process until traction is found. So in this laboratory setting, we can surmise that the center differential in this vehicle is not capable of transmitting enough power to the rear wheels to climb up the ramp. Next, let's bring up the 2008 Forester 2.5X. It is equipped with a four-speed electronic automatic transmission and as such has active all-wheel drive. Let's put the Forester through the same evaluation with the front wheels on ice and the rear wheels on the asphalt. Will it climb? See how the Forester climbs? Since the front wheels had no traction, the active all-wheel drive system sensed this loss of traction and sent more power to the rear wheels, thus giving the vehicle power, traction, and forward movement. Let's see what happens if the front wheels have traction and the rears are on ice. As you can see, the car will climb equally on the front wheels only, but for the opposite reason. The system sensed a loss of traction to the rear wheels and sent the majority of power to the front wheels. This allowed traction, control, and forward movement. Now, let's see the car on the rollers with all wheels on ice. What do you think will happen? Of course the vehicle won't climb. Why? Power is very much like electricity. It will always take the path of least resistance. No car with zero traction on all four wheels will be able to climb. The next vehicle is a 2007 Toyota Highlander. Again, this is a very popular mid-sized SUV. Sometimes it's a competitor to Forester, sometimes to Outback, and sometimes to Tribeca. Toyota lists the Highlander as full-time four-wheel drive with traction control. This means power should be going to all four wheels at the same time. The front wheels are on ice and the rear wheels are on asphalt. Since the Toyota system is full-time four-wheel drive, it should have no problem climbing since the rear wheels should have power. Does it climb? No. Just like the CRV, it is not able to transmit the torque to the rear wheels. But did you also notice what the front end was doing? It was moving side to side. That signals to us that there is evidence of torque steer. This is caused by an asymmetrical drivetrain layout. The engine is mounted transversely with a heavy transmission on the driver's side and unequal length axle shafts to the front wheels. A long axle to the right and a shorter axle to the left. 
Did you also hear how the engine speed went up and down? That's the traction control operating. And really, the driver is keeping a constant throttle. Don't believe me? Let's take a look inside the vehicle. Look at the driver's foot on the accelerator, but listen to the engine. The accelerator is literally on the floor at full throttle. Note how the traction control system takes control away from the accelerator. This is all caused by the traction control system reducing engine power in an effort to regain traction. A rather simple approach. Remember, this is a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. It should have been able to assess the situation and the vehicle should have been able to climb. But in this laboratory evaluation, it could not. The next vehicle is the 2007 Volkswagen Passat 4Motion. 4Motion is Volkswagen's version of full-time all-wheel drive. And it's really a combination of traction control, stability control, and all-wheel drive all in one package. Although its operation is different, 4Motion most closely approximates the system we have in the Legacy 2.5 GT, which is variable torque distribution all-wheel drive with vehicle dynamics control. With the front wheels on ice, the rear wheels should have traction. Let's see what the Passat will do. Okay, it climbed with no problem. But isn't that interesting, especially when compared to the Highlander, which was a bigger, heavier vehicle? Remember, the Highlander was four-wheel drive, too, and its system could not effectively assess the traction requirements to send power to the rear. Volkswagen has made claims that if only one wheel has traction, the car will move. Let's see. Let's give traction to only one front wheel. Will it climb? No. In this laboratory setting, the four motion system is not able to transmit enough power to one wheel to do that. Again, the system is trying, but is having difficulty succeeding. Let's give traction to the other front wheel and give it some gas. As you can see, the system is trying, but again, the vehicle cannot climb. Now let's see if one rear wheel having traction can validate VW's claim. As you can see, the car tries to climb. The wheel shakes slightly, but the four motion system won't transmit power. What could be the reason? Well, for 2007, the engine was resituated transversely with the gearbox on the driver's side. This has an obvious potential for torque steer. We suggest that it is this asymmetrical drivetrain layout, coupled with the weight of the car, that significantly contributes to this situation. Let's bring on the 2008 Legacy without any drama. As demonstrated with earlier vehicles, it won't climb if we put all four wheels on ice. So let's skip through this test and go directly to testing of one front wheel. Although Subaru does not claim that as long as one wheel has traction, the vehicle will move, let's see if we can validate that claim anyway. Let's give traction to the left front wheel and put the remaining three wheels on ice. Now you notice there was a slight delay as the VDC took control, but then the vehicle climbed. Now let's reverse the experiment and try with traction to the right front wheel while the other three wheels are on ice. Remember, this is where the Passat failed. But will the Legacy behave in the same manner? No, it doesn't. In this particular situation, the Legacy can climb. That's because the Legacy has a symmetrical drivetrain layout. Finally, let's try the same experiment, but on the rear wheels. Bear in mind that this is really an extreme test. The bulk of the vehicle weight is at the rear the vehicle must overcome this weight to move the vehicle forward. Which rear wheel should we lock? Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Why? Because Subaru has a symmetrical drivetrain layout. Let's give traction to the left rear wheel while the other three wheels are on ice. The VDC takes control and the car climbs. Not an easy task, but it does do it. 